Hello, in this video I'm going to show how to work with guides in Rhino with VisualArc. Guides help you maintain accuracy and precision in your project and therefore promote consistency through the design process. They act as reference points and aid in aligning different elements of the design. We can find the guide tools under the VisualArc documentation toolbar. To insert the guide, we click on this icon and before defining the first point, we can change the text that will appear in the guide uh, labels. If we type here letter A, that's going to be the text that will appear in the guide. If we draw a new guide, we'll have letter B. If we draw a new guide, but we type number 1, for example, that's a number that will appear here, and it will follow by 2, 3, and so on. Later on, we can change the text of this label by selecting any of these guides and simply changing its name from the properties panel or from the guide properties. Now, as we can see, guides are displayed as a sort of a plane. They have some top and bottom range, and by default they are calculated 4 meters above the elevation of the upper level and from the bottom, it's one meter below the elevation of the lowest level. This range will determine the elevation of the levels in the side and the elevation views. So from the front viewport, we can see the guides A and B because they are perpendicular to that viewport. While in the right viewport, we can see the guides number one and two because they are perpendicular to that viewport. Now, let's insert some objects on top of these guides. I'm going to expand this viewport and draw a few walls. Run the wall command, select a wall style, and I'm going to snap on these guides while I'm drawing the walls. I can also snap on the intersection of these guides. And now, when I move any of these guides, the guide will look for the model objects that are geometrically coincident with the guide and modify the objects that are sitting on them. For example, if I move now the guide in that direction, I can see that this wall has been stretched while this other wall has been moved. This connection also works with any piece of geometry, for example, a Rhino box. If I snap on that guide, and not only when I have an edge constant to the guide, but also a vertex of the box, for example, if I draw a box using this three-point method, Now I can see that if I move the guide, also the boxes will follow. I can tell an object to do not follow the guide if I unlink it from the guide. And I can do this from the properties panel. If I select the object from the constraints properties in the properties panel, I can uncheck this option. So right now, when I move the guide again, only the other objects will remain connected to it. By the way, guides are displayed on the current level construction plane. If we had other levels in this project, I'm going to open the level manager, add a new level, floor 2. We can see how the position of these guides changes when I switch to the other floor. Let's take a look at the guide style options. If we do right click on this icon, we'll open the Guide Styles dialog. Guide Styles define the features of guides. We select the existing style we have in this document, and from the attributes, we can change settings such as the layer, visibility, text or dimension style, and so on, just like any other annotation objects in Visual Art. For example, by default, the text of the label takes the current Rhino's dimension style. But we can overwrite the text size or the font by typing here a different text style. We select this other option and we can change the size of the text, font and other details. From the geometry tab, we can change the snap radius, which determines the minimum distance by which objects will snap to the guide and will get linked to it. We can also change how the guides are displayed in the model 
by default it's set to the levels C plane elevation but we can change that to every levels elevation so we'll see the guides on all the floors at the same time if we go to the level tab we can change the features of the level such as alignment placement or shape And finally, from the type, we can determine which objects will snap to guides by default. So for this particular style, we can exclude curves and meshes, for example, so they will never get linked to the guides when we move them. Now, let's see other ways to insert guides. Under the guide toolbar, we can find two new commands to insert guides, the guide grid and the guide from curve. The first one will generate an array of guides according to a rectangle. So we can define here in the command line the number of rows and columns of the rectangle and the text of the level in each one of the directions. So can I start by number one in the U direction and A letter in the V direction. Also the direction in which I draw the rectangle will determine the order in which text are assigned to each guide. All these guides now work as individual guides, so you can change their properties individually from the properties panel. I can also create guides from curves. They can be polylines or curves, but they need to be planar. I can draw also a curve like this. And now I run the guides from curve command, select these two curves, type the text of the first guide and the other one will follow with the corresponding value. For example, E. And now these guides work as any other guides. They will have also control points 